Hey, what's up, everybody? It's Lids, and we're back for some more Gwent. Just after the new Gwent Black Sun expansion that came out with a bunch of new cards, including some of the ones that we revealed, that being the Dantle in Distress Northern Realms card. And so you know that meant that I had to play that card. And that is why today we're actually going in standard for the first time in a long time. So we can manipulate our deck a little bit more because in this seasonal event, we can't choose the exact cards that we might want to have. So with that in mind, let's go take a look at the deck. So today we'll be playing a Northern Realms Knights deck using the newly reworked Royal Inspiration Leader ability. And so this is dramatically different from what it used to be because it is now structured around the new Grace ability. It starts off as a five power boost, but if that boost triggers Grace, we can then use that boost again. Just in that case, it gets lowered down to four power. And so in theory, if we can chain one Grace trigger into another Grace trigger, we can reuse this ability a ton of times for a just absolute ridiculous amount of additional boosts. So that's the dream, at least, but it does get kind of hard to do that mental math, bearing in mind both the boosts you get from this and also the boosts that you might get from triggering the Grace abilities as well. But other than that, it is, of course, primarily about the Knights, and that means that uh, the centerpiece is the very card that we revealed last Friday, Damsel in Distress, and so this will give us a bunch of additional value from the Knights that we play, in particular, when we trigger their Grace abilities, and that is why it can be especially difficult to know the exact amount of boost that we want when we use that leader ability. But that is the centerpiece, and along with that we have a bunch of newly reworked cards that have grace and the new cards as well. But uh, So basically it's a highly boost-centric deck, which is uh, the old school Northern Realms that initially was what made me fall in love with the faction, and the reason why I wanted to do the Northern Realms reveal for this uh, expansion in the first place. So basically, let's start off with the boosters. So we have stuff like Visigoda of Corvo, which, although very vulnerable at just three power, if you can hide him behind the defender, that's great because he will give you minimum two boosts per turn, potentially even more than that if people are playing tutors and whatnot. So that is one of the best ways to quickly scale up your boosts on some of your targets that like to receive those boosts. And we'll talk about those once we go through all of our boosters. So that's the key primary booster. Damsel in Distress, we were just looking at, can do a little bit of that as well. Other than that, we have, to a certain extent, this is a bit of a hybrid, the Maiden Shield, which is itself a target for the boost. But then once we have uh, gotten it up to the point where it triggers its grace ability, it will spawn in Bronwyn the Bold, who becomes a card that can give us additional boosts, or at least make it better to uh, double down on the boost on one of our other cards once we can use her order ability at uh, once she reaches 5 power, which you can do either by boosting the Maiden Shield all the way up to a 14, which will give Bronwyn that boost, or if you do put uh, one of our other boosters next to Bronwyn, you can still boost her up even though she has immunity, which would normally prevent you from targeting her directly. And those cards that I'm referring to would be the Temerian Drummers, good old-fashioned boosts here. So that is a solid one boost per turn. And uh, we also have other options on top of that as well. Now, let's see. We do have a Mad Charge built into our deck. Now, for the most part, that's probably a card that we're going to mulligan. So wouldn't necessarily counter that. We actually have, I think it's a bit of a stealthy addition. Uh, something that might have flown under the radar a little bit here. Griffin Witcher Ranger is really, really good for targeting boosts on one specific card, especially because you play this ideally relatively late in the round, possibly as your second to last card, and uh, it gets boosted based on the number of units in one of your opponent's rows, so that's why you want to wait a little bit so it gets to be a pretty large boost. Then on your next turn, you can, assuming that you played in the range row, although I suppose you could play it in melee row and get zeal, you can transfer those boosts onto the card that you actually want to have as your boosting target, and that makes it so it's really easy to trigger those grace cards, especially when, if you give the Griffin Witcher Ranger a bunch of boosts, yes, sometimes he'll get uh, locked or some other form of control, you know, tall removal, yes, but I think for the most part, people realize when they see this that this is not the actual card they should be afraid of, it's whatever he's about to pass the boost to, that's the card that they should be afraid of, so sometimes... Even once this gets pretty big, you can still sneak and pass some people. And we do have a lot of engines in this deck, which means that our opponent can't answer everything. We also have the Squire, which if we use its order ability, uh, we can at the very least 
boost a card by two, but if it's a knight, we will also turn it into a one point per turn engine. So that's another way to boost other cards. And we're talking about greatest abilities. Redanian Knight can boost adjacent units once it gets up to eight power, which means it's sort of a hybrid between boosting other cards and receiving boosts. Then, oh, almost forgot. Rainer, good early round play. Boosts every unit that you play once he's on the board. And once he gets up to 12 power, then he can boost all other units once again. So uh, another technically hybrid between giving out the boosts and card that you want to direct the boosts toward. I think that's it in terms of our boosters, or at least our preferred boosters. Then for the recipients, we've talked a bit about some of those hybrid cards, ones that can either be things that boost other cards or can be targets of the boosts, like the Maiden Shield. But we also have, as one of our key cards, Prince Onsais, and he's a big deal because with him, his dueling ability scales tremendously with uh, boost because that means that he will damage an opposing unit by his amount of power, and then if they're still alive, they'll hit him back, but since he's presumably going to be pretty big, since you probably put a bunch of boosts on him, he's hopefully still going to survive, in which case he hits them back again, and they keep on going until somebody gets destroyed. However, because Onsace hits first, that is a huge difference maker when it comes to this dual ability if, uh, you know, he's a 10 power unit and your opponent has an 11 power unit, yes, that 11 power unit is taller than Onsays, but because Onsays hits first, he deals 10 damage, that opposing unit is 1, now it hits Onsays and he drops down to a 9, which is almost insignificant, and at 9 power, he'll hit them back, and obviously 9 power is going to destroy a 1 power unit, so it's just crazy removal, tall removal in particular, so uh, that does make Onsays a really nice option. Usually like to save him for round 3 if your opponent is saving up some kind of big unit. So uh, that is one of, if not arguably your best, boost target for removal purposes. But for purposes of carryover, we also have the Arch Griffin, which that means you want to have this be your recipient of boosts in round one. Get it as highly boosted as possible, and then it goes back into your deck at the end of the round, maintaining those boosts, which means if you get it up to, say, 15 or maybe even 20, then you draw into it or tutor it out in round two or round three, and it will still be 20 points. So it is a great way to get a bunch of tempo in later rounds. So this is a great example also of a card that you do all of your setup on the Griffin Witcher, uh, Griffin Witcher Ranger. Give all the boost to him. And again, you're hoping that he kind of slides under the radar. Your opponent doesn't really target him because, I mean, he's not the ultimate recipient of the boost, but uh, you wait until your last turn, you play, basically play him on your second to last turn, and then on your last turn, play Arch Griffin, and immediately transfer all those boosts onto Arch Griffin, which means if your opponent does not have an immediate answer for Arch Griffin, this thing is sneaking through with that big boost. So uh, that is a really nice way to set that up. So this is your carryover option for your boost targets. Maiden Shield is kind of a middle of the road. You want to do it in probably a long round because the idea here is you get Bronwyn out. Bronwyn, as we said before, uh, can basically give that infuse ability to a different unit, which means every time it receives a boost, it receives another boost worth the same amount of value. So it just makes it more efficient for you to uh, double down on the boost for one of your preferred boost targets. Then other than that... In terms of more so the wide damage rather than the tall damage. Tall damage, as we said, you can get from Monsace, but wide damage you can get from Pride of Infantry because the number of times you boost him determines how much damage you get. And that's generally what we're doing is rather than getting you know a big burst of five points of boost, six points of boost, it's one boost here, one boost here, or one boost five times from something like Visigoda, and that means five damage from Trident Infantry. So that's what he's here for. So slightly different use case than Onsace for that reason. And that's about it for preferred boost targets. Oh, except for other Grace units, which we've talked about some of them, like Redanian Knight. There's also the Knight Errant, which once it gets up to nine power, will boost, or rather, uh, give shields to adjacent units and infuse them with the ability to, once it loses its shield, get boosted by two. So, I mean, shields are nice, yes. Doesn't synergize that much with our deck, unless, unless you put a shield on Onsace, in which case he becomes exponentially more powerful 
because he hits for his base power, or however much power he has, he hits for that much for his first round of damage with his duel. Then your opponent, if it's still alive, hits back. But if he has a shield, he takes zero damage. And then he hits back that opponent again for full damage because of that shield mitigating the damage that he would have taken. So he just becomes functionally a unit that gets three points of value, if not more, from every boost that he receives, which is just absurd. So that's why Ansace next to a Knight Errant works really well. And the get boosted by two when you lose a shield. If Ansace duels someone, he's likely to lose his shield. So... That means he's likely to receive the benefit from that boost. So, perfect combination right there is to get Ansace boosted by having him next to Knight Errant, if possible. Then, other than that, I think that's about it for targets. We do still have some other engines that will boost themselves, like Curex City Guard. And we also have, we discussed it a little bit, Verdania Knight, which does the same type of thing. And for targets for... Damsel in Distress, for shootering out, we can either go early round Redaining Knight to get an engine on the board, or late round, we can go for Kedwenny Knight for just a point slam. So if your opponent tries to bleed you out in round two or round three, uh, then that's probably your best answer, because this gets an extra boost when it gets summoned directly from your deck. Other than that, we have Visigurd is our finisher on our second to last turn, assuming that we have a bunch of boosted units since our entire deck is focused on boosting. Hopefully that is the case. That means that uh, he's going to get a whole bunch of damage. And then if you did boost up your Arch Griffin, then that is obviously your last turn play for a huge point slam. So there's a look at the deck. That is uh, a lot of detail about it. There is, of course, a lot of stuff to discuss because much of that is, if not new, at least affected by all the new cards that have been added to this deck and the new grace abilities as well. So overall, of course, the big idea is just maximize the boosts and do that by combining the cards that do the boosting and the cards that you want to receive those boosts. So with all that being said, let's go see it in action. All right, so going up against Skelga here and they'll go first. Okay, so let's see. We may want to try to build around Arch Griffin in round one, give that a whole bunch of boost, put it back into our deck, and have that be the target uh, that we try to have as our win condition for round two and round three. Damsel in Distress could help boost that up. We don't really have much in the way of Grace units here, besides Redania Knight. Do have some boost with Fisicota. Can use the Griffin Witcher Rangers to transfer boost onto the Arch Griffin so we can play it late, which is probably what we want to do. Hmm. Not loving this. I'm thinking. Dump Tron Infantry, looking for a different target, and it is definitely not the K20 Knight. Okay, Squire is not really ideal either, and I'm assuming, given how they're using Onslaught, that they may very well be using the new cards for Skelga, which I think is probably a pretty rough matchup for us. It's going to be a matter of us with our boosts versus them and their damage. I mean, they did have an odd stratagem for that. It really does look like they're doing hand boosting. Between that stratagem and Francis Bedlam, didn't really see that coming. But, uh, alas, let's see. So, we might want to play Damsel in Distress in round one. It is one of the scenarios that I think lends itself a little more to that than the others, at least. Because the fitting, obviously, the earlier we get that, the better. But, well, also, I did not even register that we got Mata. It is going to be, what, AA? Would be quite nice, to tell you the truth. But we'd like to get some engines down there first. So maybe, I mean, this Agoda would be nice. But I think if we do that, then he is going to get immediately controlled, especially given how their onslaught. Okay, we know they have uh, Sunset Wanderers. Whereas this, I mean, they could use a leader ability charge or other damage to mess with this. But it's obviously a much easier card to sacrifice. And I think. Mata on our next turn is more possible. That makes more sense with what we would expect to see from them. We'd like to get engines down first, whereas Mata is not really an engine. However, if she gives us Amphibious Assault, and we use that to get Donamir, which is what I'm at least considering, not going to get much of a boost on him, not getting any boost on him, but it does protect Visigoda, and then we can use that 
as our primary engine in round one. Uh, get a Griffin Witcher Ranger, boost that up, and then last turn transfer these boosts onto the Arch Griffin for the carryover. I think we might still go for that. Not not on Sace. I think we still go for that. I don't love the Amphibious Assaults into Donomir because it's not worth any additional points, but I mean, we could really use him right about now. Okay, fair enough. As we said, it was uh, not as important of an engine. That's why we played it first when we knew that it was possible that it would get answered. So let's go AA. We'll obviously get the echoed copy for a subsequent round, so we're not as reliant on it, giving us a boost in this round. So now, Visigoda becomes far safer. The Oncrete Longship is going to at least hurt Visigoda, which, at three power, he is certainly vulnerable. But at this point... I mean, are we looking to do Damsel? If we do Damsel at this point, we're perhaps risking that they pass early and we don't get the full value out of it. If we were going to use it in round one, we probably needed to do it earlier. Okay, they're heat waving our defender, which means they will not be able to heat wave damsel. So that is certainly interesting, but we know they have their leader ability. In fact, they could have gone with a leader ability charge after the heat wave and guaranteed that they got rid of Visigoda. So uh, it's probably a good thing that he has lasted this long for that reason. Uh, we would like. For the Griffin Witcher Ranger to be the recipient of said boosts. So maybe that's what we go for next. It is nice if we can wait a little bit to play it because they don't have a lot of units to boost this up right now. But it is still a target for Visigoda to go after with the boosts. And for that reason alone, it is probably worth doing now. This is also a great way to get up to the, our grace numbers. But then again... That is, uh, don't really have much in the way of grace cards available to us right now, unless we were to break out Damsel, which at this point, as I said, I think is not really what we want to do anymore. I'm thinking, let's see, we're on six cards. I'm thinking it's Squire into Arch Griffin on our next turn, and I'm surprised they, did, they still have not done anything to answer Visigoda. It does seem odd to me. But we do this, we get more charges for Visigoda. The longer he stays on the board, the more value he gives us. And at this point, if we could boost him with our leader ability, I don't think we want to do that at this point. Yes, they've dealt some damage to him, but we've gotten a decent number of boosts to the point where I think, you know, they're definitely going to destroy him on their next turn, no question. But enough value that we can live with that. Hmm. Now that's a little unexpected. Okay, so now the idea was that we go Squire, activate this to get the extra boost on Arch Griffin, pass the boost from the Griffin Witcher Ranger onto the Arch Griffin, and then that gives us a bunch of additional points, unless we want to wait to use this Squire, which is a little risky because it's on three power, which technically does mean they could destroy it, although they've been a little hesitant to use this order ability so far, so not sure if they're about to do it. But if we wait... Play a, a Squire on this turn, then we can go double Squire into our Triffin on our next turn and make it that much bigger. So that is greedier, for sure. But uh, is that worth doing? Possibly. I feel like if we do this, they might pass. They might pass here. And if they do, then we have... Certainly have the points past them. We just want for, ideally, these squires to last till the end of this turn. Which they will. Okay. So now... Now we go... I think double squire. So it's not going to be a knight. Which means it's not going to get boosted at the end of every turn. So, it, I mean, we could have gone on Sace, although at this point we're probably saving him. And he's more of a round three card, I think. So, go with you. The reason to... Might play you in the melee row. I mean, then again, this is 
Griffin Witcher Ranger is going to pass over its boost, so it's not like we're going to have two big cards right next to each other, even though at the moment it looks like that would be the case. So we do this, hit it up to 16, and that's not enough actually for us to catch them, but if they do keep on playing, then uh, we could Griffin Witcher Ranger melee row pass boost, I'd have to do the math to see if that's sufficient. If they keep on playing here, then uh, we might pass and just settle for our 16 points of carry over on this Arch Griffin. And there's their Sunset Wanderers as well, that they do eventually get out of their hand, and I think that was the recipient of a lot of their hand boosting on Francis Bedlam. So I think, given that deficit now, and given how they had to commit one of their better cards, I think we're fine. We basically set up entirely for round two and round three with Arch Griffin. We know we can get it back at least for one more round with Amphibious Assault. Okay, so yep, it means they'll take round one, but I think we're fine with that for the time being. Okay, so Temerian Drummer is good for boosting up some of our cards here, most notably on Sace and Trident of Infantry. At this point, we have already used our Arch Griffin which is the primary reason why we have a Griffin Witcher Ranger is to pass those boosts over to the Arch Griffin. Could potentially do that as well in round two, but that's unlikely. So I think we... And that is a knight. We do now have two knights to trigger Damsel in Distress, so we might keep it that way. And since we do have some potential recipients of the boosts, Trident of Infantry is not all that necessary here, so maybe we, yep, look for Raynard, who's probably better. Although now we are looking at needing a throwaway card here, and so... Okay, now we do need to dump something. And it might even be the Knight Errants. Mm, then again, we want to have Grace abilities. I mean, Raynard is basically a better Temerian Drummer. He's also a Knight. So maybe he also has a Grace ability. Maybe that means we're willing to use the Temerian Drummer as our throwaway. I suppose so. Tribe Infantry technically would have actually been the best in that case, but was... Wanting to repair just in case they pushed in round two. Okay, so we have Visigurd as a potential finisher. Dark City Guard is a early round engine and a good card to put next to Knight Errants. We're obviously going to play Damsel in Distress in this round. At the moment, Amphibious Assault is for Arch Griffin, but let's see if we can dump Mad Charge and get the Arch Griffin. Okay, that's big. That means now we can go after either Maiden Shield is a 9, right? So no boosts on it through Amphibious Assault, but it is too durable. Could tutor Knight Errant instead, or... Yeah, okay. It's looking like that'll be the case then. I think this is about as good as it gets. Maybe you could swap out Garrick City Guard, but I think it does make sense as our first turn play here, or... Raynard, alternatively. Either one. Raynard is a knight. Now, timing at which we want to trigger Damsel in Distress and all the chapters of it, it doesn't matter too much. We'd probably like to have Mad Charge as something we can use on, on Sace, ideally. So that would mean we might want to play Raynard before we play Damsel in Distress. Yeah, this will be our last turn play. This will be our second to last turn play. So yeah, it's one of these guys. Let's go, uh... Go... Cure... Hey, Raynard. Now, we've not yet seen any of the new cards from them. I don't think any of them yet. But if they do have Bjorn Stormerson, then this would not be a bad time to break him out. But it's Ale the Ancestors. So that is not an immediate threat. Now let's go Kyrak City Guard. And this will get boosted. And we want to try to have boosted units next to each other to set up the Knight Errants. So with, what, three Knights in hand? It means we can potentially play one more Knight before we go into Damsel. But we could use Damsel on our next turn. It might force us into going with a slightly earlier Prince Ansace. Okay, they're going to lock Raynard. 
Not a bad option for them, but we do, of course, have other cards that are also going to be valuable, like on Sace, even Knight Errants. So, I mean, we were, we were saying we might even, might even want to Amphibious Assault into Knight Errant, because that does a really good job of getting us close to the point where it's going to trigger its grace. So, yeah, that's true. That might mean we have, in effect, a, a fourth knight here. So what if we do... This is the problem, is with their damage, they can potentially slow down and actually start damaging Knight Errants. But let's play the one from hand here next to the Kyrak City Guard, which will boost it by one. Which now means our leader ability would... Ooh, that's dangerous. And... Potentially... I don't know. Or our highest unit would be Carrick City Guard. I mean, it's a six. It will become bigger. Onsace plus leader... Onsace melee row plus leader ability is enough to take it out. It does mean Onsace is no longer a great target for Damsel. And we would need to use Amphibious Assault to get ourselves another knight. And Damsel in Distress would need to be our next play after this turn. I think that's probably still worth doing. It's not how we planned for this to go, but I think that is probably still necessary. It's also not the ideal leader ability because we wanted to use that on a grace card so we could chain multiple rounds of it. Oh, in fact, could we? We could have gone Knight Errants and then, yeah, should have been. Knight Errants, uh, would, well, if we did Knight Errants and then onto Onsace, we actually would have only gotten Onsace up to an eight, which would have meant that uh, he could have still destroyed um, Villain Tretton Mirth. Not quite as efficiently, but it would have worked. So yeah, that was still the right move, was to boost you and then you. Okay, so it's Croc. Lowest unit that we have is currently Knight Errants. We are going to need to go Damsel now. So, should play this. And... We're going to... Summon in. Okay, 20 Knight is probably the most efficient, although we're Danny Knight. Do we have enough time for that to pay off for us? Probably not. Probably is more efficient to just go for the pure points. And it puts a boosted unit immediately next to the Knight Errant, which is good, because that means now is surrounded by boosted cards, so we'll get boosted by two every turn. So it's Gonna be hard to get that up to its grace value, but we're gonna see if we can make it happen. Next turn is Amphibious Assault into another Knight of some variety. Now yeah, they can lead your ability to take this out. Yeah, and they will. It's probably the right move, but we could Amphibious Assault into uh, a different Knight Errant to put it in between these two guys for similar results here. And that is, I think, what we want to do, because Fissigurd is our second to last play. And Arch Griffin is our last play. So, I mean, it's either that or it's it's made in shield. We definitely are not going to be able to trigger this grace, though. We might be able to with you because Amphibious Assault is going to give you a big boost. And you will have two boosted units on either side of you. So that does work well. Yeah, I think it's, it's pretty clearly Knight Errant is the answer. Let's see. There you are. So, gets you up to a seven. And now you will actually immediately get up to nine because you are surrounded by boosted units. So that will trigger your grace, which will give us additional boost from Damsel in Distress. Like so. And so that's where we ideally, again, ideally would have had Onsace set up here. Wait, we wanted to. Oh, technically you had Veil, so you weren't going to get that uh, shield and infuse ability anyway. And they had some purification, which will... Uh, take away some of the value from that. But now it's time for Visigurd, and with one, two, three, four boosted units plus his starting charge, five damage. It's not amazing, but it's obviously something. And he is also our last knight, which means we will get the mad charge, which at this point, uh, I mean, we've already triggered your grace, so that doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, they have an Igni that technically 
is the most effective card against us, so we'd kind of like to not have everything be 11 power. Then again, you're going to get boosted at the end of our turn anyway. So, yeah, I think we just go on to either Raynard or Visigurd. I guess we'll go Visigurd. Just make it a little bit harder for them to answer him if they are trying to do that. As he does, of course, still have value with his order abilities on our next turn. Also, I mean, I guess we could have moved Wiggenberg to a different row to mitigate the armor, but I'm not sure that really matters. Okay, so Triss is going to deal damage. And they do go range row, so good thing that we split a little bit, but we still have a pretty large lead here. The armor is going to make it hard for us to break through that with Physicard, but that is theoretically the plan. And obviously, our big Arch Griffin finisher that we set up in round one, that was the plan, was to make it so that we had a point slam for this exact purpose. Now, I, I mean, I guess we just get rid of Triss. And then uh, from here on out, it really doesn't make much of a difference at all. Huzzah, I mean, we can move you with Kyrk City Guard, but we get a boost if we don't do it, so I think we won't bother. And it means we have a 40 plus point lead here. They can reset one card, but even then, we'll still take the lead. All right, so going up against Northern Realms here, and we'll go first. Okay, so let's see. We have Amphibious Assault. We do not have our scenario, but we have Mata who can give us our scenario, and we have Curse Scroll, which we know we can get our scenario. I mean, I guess we potentially go for Don Amir if we have something we need to protect. Otherwise, getting Onsace in hand would be nice. Visigoda, if we had our defender, Don Amir would be useful. So let's try... Dumping, ooh, probably Mad Charge. A Maiden Shield could be a target for our boost here. And then trying to infantry, probably don't need two of them and Maiden Shield. That's a lot of targets for our boosts. In fact, try dumping you as well. We do get Damsel in Distress. Okay, so that is one less card than we are trying to uh, tutor through Mata. So actually, what does Mata give us in that case? Is it Donmir? No, it's Onsace, right? Onsace is 10? Okay, I mean, that, not that that's a bad thing, but... That means we could Amphibious Assaults into Donomir and then Curse Scroll into Visigoda and use that to maximize our boosts. And then target those boosts being possibly Maiden Shield, possibly Knight Errants. I think I like the sound of that. I think I like the sound of that. So they are, of course, Northern Realms as well, but they're in mobilization. So I'm assuming that this is not a mirror match. I mean, of course, the leader ability is not, but I mean, then again, many of the knights are also soldiers, so it could still be somewhat similar. So that's one boost per turn. But if we get Visigoda out here through Curse Scroll, then that is actually two, at least, boosts per turn from him. So I do like... That option there. It does mean we're going to have to swap something out. And if we're not playing Redanian Knight early, then it's not a great option for us. And I'm not sure that we are going to do that because we have other things that we want to prioritize in this round. Maybe we save you for a subsequent round for a, an early round play. So let's get Visigoda. Let's dump this Redanian Knight. Let's play Visigoda. And, I mean, we'll save the boosts. We'll save them. Because so I think every boost could matter to help get up to our grace for Maiden Shield, I think, is the big thing we're playing around here. You can justify Damsel in round one, I think, because the thinning gives you, a, well, a way to get better value out of that. I don't like Rafford's Vengeance because it is possible for them to get damage on Visigoda with that. So that is not ideal, but if we get more units down here, then that is, of course, going to mean that the damage gets split more. And we have, we don't have Onsace now. We could get Onsace through Mata 
But at that point, it's too slow. They're going to at least get one turn worth of Rapid's Vengeance out here. So I think we shouldn't rush to try to answer this because we don't have the speed to make that happen anyway, not without Anseis directly in hand right now. So I think we probably still proceed as planned here, and we actually can trigger this grace immediately. Now, of course, you'd like to have many of your grace units saved up. Now, this could actually get destroyed by Rafford's Vengeance damage as well. We'd like for it to hit a shielded unit, obviously. That'd be really nice. It will proc damage now. What's it going to be? Oh, it's not crew yet. Yeah, they technically should have played it over there. I mean, I see what they're doing. They're trying to get the boost on Trident Infantry via Sumerian Drummer. And they can definitely get some damage this way. Fortunately, most of it's going to Donomir. Don't hit Bronwyn. Don't hit Bronwyn. You have one more boost from Tamarian Drummer. Don't hit Bronwyn. Ooh, you didn't hit Bronwyn. Okay, nice. So, uh, what we can do here is we might want to go Tamarian Drummer. And uh, we'll want to save Knight Errants, I think, and other Grace units for when we play Damsel Distress, which is, it looks to be, going to be in a subsequent round. So, let's go Tamarian Drummer here, giving us another way to boost up Bronwyn. Not to mention, we also can get you up to... It's not going to be enough, but it's it's something here. So, if we can get you up to 14, then you'll just give a boost directly to Bronwyn. But, uh, I mean, technically we could go Leader Ability, which definitely is enough. We can't target Bronwyn with Fisigoda because she has immunity, but Tamarian Drummer will still boost her, so that's one way. And by getting the Maiden Shield up to 14, that's the other way. So, it's a kind of a middle ground approach, what we've done here. And they technically can still hit Bronwyn with Rafford's Vengeance for enough damage, and Tron Infantry could complicate things. Okay, didn't see that one coming. Very good play, though. Very good play, though. Um, yeah. So that hurts. Um, okay. Where do we go from there, you ask? Great question. Um, need to be a little mindful of pacing here. They're gonna getting two points per turn out of value from this. One boost, one damage from the boost. So we, at the very least, would like to match that. Matza to get on Sace. I'm not sure if that makes much sense anymore. Otherwise, pacing-wise, we're going to start to fall behind. Because, again, we're not getting two points per turn. Yeesh. Yeah. Really good answer with that last rate. Because we did have several cards on two power, including ones that we were very much relying on. I think we might need to pass this one early. So that means they'll win round one here, but we deliberately did so with some cards to spare, so it's harder for them to bleed us. Okay, so of course we still have Damsel in Distress, so we still have a big play here. We'd like to make sure that we have plenty of Knights to trigger that and Grace abilities along with those. So Knight Errants gives us some of that. Squire gives us a little bit of that, at least for the Knights, less so for the Grace. So we might swap one of them out, and we do have at least a target for our boosting with Trident Infantry. So K20 Knight, we want to keep that in deck. That's not where we want to see that, and Mad Charge is not great either. So they do technically have two throwaway cards here. So we do want to try to read this situation a bit and confirm or deny whether these are just throwaway cards or if they're actually trying to play in round two, because this is an engine, and at six provisions, it is not a bad engine at that. So, a little surprising to see them go that route. It does suggest that they are looking to go for a longer round two, so I think maybe we go for Matza, because at least short-term it does outpace them, and it does give us Onsays, who is potentially an answer if they do try to set up something big. Uh, Yennefer. 
would immediately get destroyed by Ansays if we wanted to go that route. That is our quickest route to shut that down. Our longer term route would be Tritum Infantry the, with boosts through Tamarian Drummer, uh, Squire, potentially, and maybe even Damsel or Mad Charge does work a little a little better than on uh, Trident Infantry than it does on other cards because the vitality is nice. Getting a, a few more additional procs of boosts. So I think pacing wise this is going to hurt us a bit but we now have a little bit of time anyway because we did use Mata which made this round last a little bit longer. So we're going with you. Okay well we were going with you to set up some more boosts. Okay, so this is becoming a little problematic here because they have an engine that's going to continue to gain power and uh, Yennefer Illusionist remains relevant as well. So, and not to mention, this is actually, yeah, that's not a bad combo either. Spawn in the volunteers, get yourself a little more damage for Yennefer. So, that's definitely the idea. I think they're trying to have this continue to go for as long as possible. So, it might make sense. And now pacing does matter. It might make sense for us to break out Nonsense, and uh, it's it's overkill to use the leader ability charge on him for damage purposes. But unless we're going after you rather than you, but in terms of putting points on our side of the board, I mean I think we're just doing a basic Nonsense on Yennefer for the short term damage, and yes. This could have gotten us up to tying territory, pacing-wise, but that doesn't really change much for us. And it's more Kyrak Frigates. Okay, so those are also engines, of course. They aren't quite as dangerous as they were when they had Yennefer. So, what was our plan for Amphibious Assaults? Not necessarily sure that we had one, per se. Actually, Amphibious Assault into Ken 20 Knight is our best pacing option that is capable about pacing them here, I think. Yeah, it definitely is. But then again, that is a, it's a point slam. It's not an engine set up at all, and they they are setting up engines here. So it does put us in a, a tight spot. So, you know, we're we looking at needing to go damsel soon. We're we're getting there. I think we might need to set ourselves up a bit here with Squire. Get ourselves an engine. That's going to go on Pride of Infantry. Okay, it's Marion Drummer. That's another engine. So yeah, they're, they're entering engine overload territory, which is something that we want to do and now can do to a certain extent at least. Okay, they will pass here. They'll continue to get one point per turn with Kirak Frigate. And so what we're looking for now is this is the time for the point slam with Amphibious Assault into K20 Knight. Where'd you go? There you are. Because that's worth a lot. Even after they get boosted there, it is still enough for us. Now, granted, we did need to go a card down because... They did a good job leading us. They went engines, whereas they shut down ours. Okay, so Raynard and Kirak City Guard give us cards that can either get boosted or set up other boosts, which works well with Knight Errant. We do still have Damsel in Distress, so that's big. We want to play Redanian Knight early, definitely dumping... Mad charge here, and not sure Griffin Witcher or Ranger is really what we're looking for. Try to infantry to give us a more natural target for the boosts. Not bad. So I think that means I mean we have several cards here that we want to play first. We have three knights. Four knights, actually. So Timing of Damsel. The 
depends what we're going for. If we're going for a Dainy Knight, we want to do it immediately. And I think we actually are. Unless it's Squire. It could be Squire. And then use that to make Raynard a one point per turn engine. Make that a little bit harder for them to answer. Maybe we go that route. I think we do. Ah, uh, that's... Not the card that I said I was going to use. I admittedly, apparently, totally blanked out. Um, I mean, it's still not bad. That was initially what I was thinking we would do. It is one point per turn on itself, but it does mean that Raynard is going to be a little bit easier for them to handle. But let's play him next. Yeah. And now, whenever we trigger Grace, we're going to boost adjacent units. They're loading up an armor. They're going to put a Stealth Kirk in between these two. And get a bunch of armor on him so that they can do less more easily. Is that the idea? I'm not entirely sure, to be honest with you. So we're going to get a Mad Charge next night that we play. Which means we might actually want to get Tritum Infantry down here first. Because that is probably our best recipient of that. I mean, it would still help us get to Grace more quickly and easily for things like the Knight Errant, so it's not terrible in that way. I think we still do this. So every card we have here, basically, we want to play quickly, is, uh, is the bit of the problem is we didn't have many, didn't have quite as many engines as we would have liked previously. Now we have basically all engines. But now let's go... Hmm. I think Knight Errant is still better. That's potentially two points per turn, whereas that's just one point per turn. This is one point per turn, unless we can get you up to Grace, but we also want to get you up to Grace, so... It's this. It's Mad Charge, which I think is best on you. Um. Excuse me? We... It is not a knight. We control a knight, but it is not a knight. I take it back. That was not the preferred target. Okay, Alistair's Thunder to go after Raynard. So we did get a little bit... Did we boost him? Actually, we didn't boost him up. He's still standing, so that's good. Um, we're probably looking at leader ability pretty soon here to try to chain a whole bunch of grace, and we are looking to row stack, which is, of course, a little bit scary, but I think that is the plan, and possibly go one knight errant into another. Now, that means we could go four. We need three, so we could go four, three. Need a little bit more here, so technically, I think waiting one more turn would be preferable. Because these guys will continue to get boosted. Now, do they have something big that they're saving up for here with all their armor stacking up? That's what I don't really understand. Is that would appear to be set up. Triss Telekinesis into what, though? Another Alistair Thunder? Okay, going after Rainer, but I think for the most part, he's done his thing at this point. So... What if we go for Danian Knight here and we start breaking out the leader ability so it's going to be we need just one boost on you you need three you need one so that's going to trigger automatically but uh, you need you need six and this is a five might still wait one more turn. This one is going to trigger. So I was hoping to just chain non-stop leader ability charges. But we needed this to get slightly more boosted up. To maximize the chainage. Actually. So you're going to get boosted too? Well now we can't. <laughs> now we can't because we're running out of time. But yes we had some serious potential to, to chain. We did get several grace abilities proccing here. You and you. This will... Trigger Grace soon. Okay, I'm not sure why you're doing that there. 
But, uh, so obviously, we're going for you next. So you're our last card. That goes without saying. Between that row, so we have, uh, not absolutely everything in this range row, but we can boost and trigger your grace. We can boost and trigger your grace. Technically, we should probably do this first, then this. Well, actually, yeah, that's going to be enough to trigger your grace as well. So, uh, that means at this point, we can get a little bit of damage if we boost up Trident Infantry for to be four, or we can just split our boost a little bit more between rows. I think we probably want to do that just to play it safe. Either way, I think they realize we have definitely passed them here and they won't be able to catch us. Now, bear in mind, we were a card down there and they had double last say, but we still, with Damsel in Distress, got the job done. So there's a look at a new Northern Realms Knights deck. If you liked the video, then make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and leave a comment down below. Let me know which other cards, archetypes, and factions you'd like us to experiment with next. And also take a look at both our reveal for that Damsel in Distress card that we did a few days ago to see my initial thoughts about it, as well as some combos that I think could work well with it, in addition to a recent video that I made about all the new cards that just got added to the game and how I think it is best to play them. Thank you all for watching, and I'll catch you next time.